because every time is someone's first time. This is a bit of a special video here because I have joining us tonight someone who is a brand new, freshly minted LT sailor. Um, I'll introduce uh, Daryl in a second, but Daryl has just got his board and I thought it would be really valuable to hear about his experience looking at LTs, purchasing LTs, getting on the board for the first time. So um, look, I'm not gonna muck around anymore. Uh, I'm going to go throw straight to, ladies and gentlemen, Daryl State. Hey, Daryl. Good evening. How are you? Have things going thank you. on? Oh, of course. Of course. Um, I, I was genuinely excited when you reached out to me and you let me know that you, were, you had your board on order. Um, so there was going to be another one of us. Uh, and you've since got your board. And I thought, let's chat. Let's um, tell everybody what it's like, because it can be quite daunting, I think. Uh, when you're thinking about getting a board, what goes into it, how do you put it together, all that sort of thing. So I'm really interested to hear your experience in that. So uh, sure. first of all, what is your background in sailing? Do you have any? Um, yeah, I suppose, uh, I mean, I've sailed lots of, on a social level, lots of kinds of dinghies. And um, I guess in the last few years, I even had a bit of an involvement with um, trailer sailors but uh, I, my background is sailboarding but it's not really that recent so as a kid the way this kind of came about is I went to a an international school in the Middle East and it just so happened that we had uh, a gentleman recruited in 1984 who had a background in aquatic activities and he was a particular specialist in windsurfing and he got brought on board to do uh, an outdoor pursuits program so the way it worked out my father was the swimming coach he did that program. They both worked together on some of the like snorkeling activities. And my dad learned to sail from this guy. And of course, so he could go sailing on the weekend. What better thing to do than teach a young lad to sail? So my dad taught me and uh, it kicked off from there and was our main weekend social activity. So, and there've been times when I've gone back to it over the years um, for a brief period, but it, it hasn't been the main activity. And that's, that's basically due to the, until recently, the lack of um clubs that race so that's all changed recently okay oh good good fantastic and what made you consider the lt as a way of getting back into sailing well i i kind of be monitoring in the background the development of this board because um you know i'm sure we'll talk about this significantly in over, over the coming weeks coming months but uh, i did try with some others to get some interest in one design racing probably about uh, 20 years ago uh, and one of the issues was that the boards that were available were either too expensive uh, they weren't supported by manufacturers like they didn't keep making the same one for long enough um, or you know there was the old windsurfer one design but the windsurfer one design i found did not handle particularly well in the swell at least not unless you're a really really good sailor and could sail around its issues so I thought, wouldn't it be good if we had um, boards a little bit like the boards I sailed on in my youth in the in the 80s, um, which were like the Mistral Competition, Competition Superlight, Bermuda, all those kind of boards, traditional long boards from the same mold. And they weren't available, but I thought, well, if one comes about, I'd, I'd love to do this again. So I monitored it, started watching videos of people sailing LTs and go, this is, um, this is great. It's going great guns again. So yeah, that's kind of uh, what I, I'm watching YouTube, you know, and uh, listening to what other people like yourselves were saying, and I thought, I think I want to try this again. Oh, brilliant. Oh, I'm glad that, that we could be there to help promote the the sport and the board. So that sounds like it's a, a really positive thing. Um, and look, the million dollar question, or the three and a half thousand dollar question, um, how was the purchasing process? Um, how did you find it? Could it, uh, was it easy? Tell me more about it. It, it was um, it was pretty intuitive, um, and I, I mean I'll start first with the three and a half thousand. That was interestingly a figure that years ago I speculated as being the sweet spot for a brand new package, board and sale. Um, so when I saw that, that that made it quite enticing. But from there it was like you know the first step is who's selling them, um, and most people uh, you know said up Binks is your local dealer. 
So I just got online, sent them a message, sent them an email, uh, and then uh, got in contact, rang them up. In fact, I, I think I, I phoned them first, and then Shane told me a little bit about it. He was involved. Um, and then he told me in more detail by email. And after I, I went out, and I'm going to segue very briefly, um, I one of the things that stopped me sailing for a number of years with this medical issue I had, uh, an overuse autoimmune inflammatory condition. So I needed first to make sure I could still sail. So I took um, my old boards out just to check I could. And as soon as I found I, I was not completely rubbish, um, I, uh, I basically rang up Shane and said, uh, yeah, let's make an order and let's do it. So uh, I was pretty happy with it, but I still at that stage had not sailed one, not until I got my hands on it. Perfect. So the anticipation is real. And so you placed your order. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you're waiting for it to come in. I, I, yep. I remember that period myself when I uh, uh, had placed my order and uh, chain at Binks, same same um, store, and they said, oh, it'll be about three months. And so I'm like, oh, yeah, that's okay, that's okay, no rush. Uh, and just, yeah, again, watching YouTube videos uh, every week. I think I was watching the Nick Bez setup video when Shane rang me and said, your board's in. <laughs> and I went down there. Uh, Picked it up. Sandy from the store was really nice and, and uh, drove it down to the Yacht Club straight after work. Uh, I bought it on a Friday and I was racing on the Saturday. Uh, incredible. Um, yeah. And yeah. So, I mean, yeah, there was there was the anticipation. Um, and I think they must have got a lot better at this because it took them two weeks. That's what he said it would take. Uh, and in anticipation, I had to free up some room. So those boards I just mentioned that were like antiques, um, I went out just to see if they still worked, see if I still worked. Um, I sold one of them uh, with a sale at a doddle and I gave another one away because I needed space to store the new board and that's what I'd be fundamentally sailing most of the time. Uh, and two weeks later it came in, I mean literally during the week I got rid of one of the other ones, uh, picked it up on the way and from there on that same day, very similar to yourself, we went all the way down to Galway. Um, in fact, I was a bit keen because I remember leaving the boom behind and I got a call from uh, Shane going, you left your boom behind, <laughs> it's out the front. <laughs> so we went back, grabbed it, got down to Gorwa, um, and I mean, I've sailed it four times now because I've only had it two weeks. Three out of the four times I've sailed it, it's been non-planning conditions. Um, and I think you've probably got some footage of one of those days, uh, it was yesterday. Uh, in fact, it's only about three knots, a very low wind. But there was this uh, one other day that I got no footage at all from, and it was it was planing conditions, and that was a lot of fun. So um, I had a lot of anticipation, and uh, you know, as I say, I have sailed the Windsurfer One design, but I I, I never liked it. I thought it really was a, a, like a brick on ice when it came to handling. So I wasn't sure what to expect. I thought, whatever it is, I'm going to make it work. I got on the board. And I thought, you know what, this feels like something I know. This feels, it just does not feel like sailing a Wally. This feels like sailing a Mistral Superlight, uh, the way it moves. And I was all smiles. And <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's, there's a bit of pumping there in that, that shot because there's no wind. But I mean, interestingly in that shot, if you look in the background, there's a, there's a, it's not a full regatta, but there's some practice going on. And those kids are just out having a good time. And what you often find in Gorwa is a lot of the, guys don't even get up till there's 20 knots and they'll take their short boards out there yeah. uh, there I am in three knots on a you know a long board from that's that's like a board for the 80s and I'm still having good fun I'm you know I'm not going anywhere fast but we're throwing it around a bit and just getting used to it and you can have the same fun as you know those people out there in their their boats in in next to no wind but also in in good wind as well so yeah right. I was all smiles you are ripping and your, your board handling is definitely right where it needs to be for sure. Um, I'll be cool. watching and your videos. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I've learned a few things. And, and that Nick Bears video you talked about, about the setup that I think you mentioned you've watched 12 times. I've already seen it through once. Um, and yeah, with your help and, and others online, I'm, I'm already learning a bit about it. So it's, 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 a, um, you know, it's a learning curve, but it's a fun one. It's a really good fun one. Awesome. And of course, you know, you've, you've got the board, you've got the sail, you've got the rig, you get it down there for the first time, you pull it out the back of the car. What was it like rigging the sail and setting up the board? Was that daunting at all? I mean, I could imagine that, you know, you, you 
kind of like uh, you've mentioned that you've seen some videos and, and whatnot, but um, how did you find it? No, very intuitive. And again, I think I'm, I think you might have mentioned this in your last video back in the day, um, or it might have been your guest. You know, we all remember tying booms to masts or using a knotted piece of rope or a bung or whatever it was. And you, and and and, and it, a lot of us can remember the days of moving the mast up and down because it wasn't fixed tightly. You know, if you you knew you did it well if it was well fixed. So this clamp that's on all modern boards. Um, I mean, to be fair, I've, I've been familiar with it because I've sailed in the last, you know, 20 years. Um, but it was it was like that. It was an old design, an old classic design, but but re-envisaged, reborn, um, intuitive, uh, very easy. This this is a, you know, it's not even a fully battened sail. It's not a, you don't have to worry about camber juices. Um, you know, it's. I know that there are some little. Uh, there's a bit of nuance to the setup to get it perform really well, but to just get out there, it's a piece of cake. And um, I found it really quite quick to do. Yeah. So again, oh, all smiles. Yeah, well, that's reassuring to know. Sure. Um, and so, what have you enjoyed most about your first few sales, yeah, which we're watching here? Um. Yeah, well, this was the same was yesterday when there was no win. But uh, I mean, if I had to pinpoint the day, obviously the planing day, which was Tuesday last week, I got a day off work, so I looked at the forecast. Down we went, and uh, initially it wasn't that windy, but then it blew, and I thought, oh, this is, this is a blast. It handles well at speed as well. I mean, it, it, it you've got to hold on to it, but I, I love that. But what have I enjoyed? I've enjoyed uh, just getting out there again, uh, finding that. I can still do this because it gave me so much pleasure as a you know in my youth. Um, I just I felt surprisingly at home. Uh, yeah, windsurfing is a great exciting sport. I think just being out there, but then having the confidence in this new board to to know that it, it feels predictable. It's uh, I just didn't feel that with the with its predecessor, the Windsurfer One design. It again um, taking back taking things back to my youth it reminded me of sailing some of those classic mistral boards so uh yeah just being out there on a board that i enjoy sailing awesome awesome it, it clearly shows in that footage uh so where to now uh, what are your plans for this season daryl you, you've got the board now what's ha what's happening what's coming up well um i mean firstly i guess just to get practice in as many different conditions as possible. Um, I am planning to join the uh, Brighton Seacliff Yacht Club. Um, you know, I, I could see from, you know, the videos you make that it, it does get lumpy. That is going to be a challenge. Um, it did get a little bit uh, lumpy at Gore the other day just because of the wind, but it's different on the ocean. And um, so I've got to get used to that. And, and that just means going down there and sailing and enjoying it, enjoying falling in and uh, improving my racecraft. That's, um, that's something I found the last few years because I got back into another sport that I used to do as a kid, go-karting. And it took me a few races to you know start getting that racecraft back. But you know the important thing is to enjoy the process. Um, you know, as a as a musician, you know, you may well, I, I you probably hear this from a lot of people when you ask them what is, and, mm -hmm. and you know, I'm not particularly good on any instrument, but for yourself, it's the learning process often. And uh, I, I can remember um, a teacher once saying to me, he had a really good student, and he said, if I could forget everything I learned, um, I would do it just to go through the experience of learning it. So for me, getting back out there, learning the old skills, uh, getting better at it, enjoying doing a physically demanding sport and um, hopefully meeting some people with like-minded like, like ideas and just having a few laughs as well when things don't always go according to plan. Oh, yeah. Yeah, just you wait, Daryl. Um, I can't wait to introduce you to everybody at the Sailing Club and show you around. Uh, really excited for you. Congratulations. You've, you've taken the step and, um, yeah, here's to a great season. Yeah, looking forward to it. Thanks so much for your time. Thanks for joining me. Thank you. Thank you very much no for inviting me on. Yeah, of course. Thanks, everyone.